Are you crazy? Even if you don't get stuck in the tube, you have no idea how deep it is. You're right. You'll be burned alive. Possibly. Piper unbuckled her sword and tossed it into the pit to the right. I'll let you know if it's safe. Wait for my word. Don't you dare, Annabeth warned. Piper jumped. For a moment she was weightless in the dark, the sides of the hot stone pit burning her arms. Then the space opened up around her. Instinctively she tucked and rolled, absorbing most of the impact as she hit the stone floor. Flames shot up in front of her, singeing her eyebrows, but Piper snatched up her sword, unsheathed it, and swung before she even stopped rolling. A bronze dragon head, neatly decapitated, wobbled across the floor. Piper stood, trying to get her bearings. She looked down at the fallen dragon head and felt a moment of guilt, as if she'd killed Festus, but this wasn't Festus. Three bronze dragon statues stood in a row, aligned with the holes in the roof. Piper had decapitated the middle one. The two intact dragons were each three foot tall, their snouts pointing up at their steaming mouths wide open. They were clearly the source of the flames, but they didn't seem to be automatons. They didn't move or try to attack her. Piper calmly sliced off the heads of the other two. She waited. No more flames shot upward. Piper! Annabeth's voice echoed from far above like she was yelling down a chimney. Yeah? Piper shouted. Thank the gods! Are you okay? Yeah, hold on a second. Her eyesight adjusted to the dark. She scanned the chamber. The only light came from her glowing blade and the pits above. The ceiling was about thirty feet high. By all rights, Piper should have broken both legs in the fall, but she wasn't going to complain. The chamber itself was round, about the size of a helicopter pad. The walls were made of rough-hewn stone blocks chiseled with Greek inscriptions, thousands and thousands of them, like graffiti. At the far end of the room, on a stone dais, stood the human-sized bronze statue of a warrior, the god Ares, Piper guessed, with heavy bronze chains wrapped around his body, anchoring him to the floor. On either side of the statue loomed two dark doorways, each ten feet high, with a gruesome stone face carved over each archway. The faces reminded Piper of gorgons, except for they had lion's manes instead of snakes for hair. Piper suddenly felt very much alone. Annabeth! she called. It's a long drop, but it's safe to come down. Maybe, uh, if you have a rope you could fasten it and we can get back up. On it! A few minutes later, a rope dropped from the center pit, and Beth shinny down it. Piper McLean, she grumbled, that was without a doubt the dumbest risk I've ever seen anyone take, and I hate a dumb risk taker. Thank you. Piper nudged the nearest decapitated dragon head with her foot. I'm guessing these are the dragons of Ares, the ones that are his sacred animals, right? And there's the chain god himself. Where do you think those doorways? Piper held up her hand. Do you hear that? The sound was like a drumbeat, with a metallic echo. It's coming from inside the statue, Piper decided. The heartbeat of a chained god. Annabeth unsheathed her dragon-bone sword. In the dim light, her face was ghostly pale, her eyes colorless. I, I don't like this, Piper. We need to leave. The rational part of Piper agreed. Her skin crawled. Her legs ached to run. But something about this room felt strangely familiar. The shrine is ramping up our emotions, she said. It's like being around my mom, except for this place radiates fear, not love. That's why you started feeling overwhelmed on the hill. Down here it's a thousand times stronger. Annabeth scanned the walls. Okay, well, we need a plan to get the statue out. Maybe haul it up with the rope, but... Wait! Piper glanced at the snarling stone faces above the doorways. A shrine that radiates fear. Ares has two divine sons, didn't he? Uh, ph Phobius and Demios, Annabeth shivered. Panic and fear. Percy met them on Staten Island once. Piper decided not to ask what the twin gods of panic and fear had been doing in Staten Island. I think those are their faces above the doors. This isn't just a shrine to Ares, it's a temple of fear. Deep laughter echoed through the chamber. On Piper's right, a giant appeared. He didn't come through either doorway, he simply emerged from the darkness as if he'd been camouflaged against the wall. He was small for a giant, perhaps twenty-five feet tall, which would give him enough room to swing a massive sledgehammer that he was holding in his hands. His armor, his skin, and his dragon-scale legs were all the color of charcoal. Copper wires and smashed circuit boards glittered in the braids of his oil-black hair. 
Very good, child of Aphrodite, the giant smiled. This is indeed the Temple of Fear, and I'm here to make you believers.